Um, are we all muted? Yes. So yeah, in the webinar scenario, um, yeah. So you've got to be a, a panelist to be able to uh, to to speak. Yeah. Sorry. It's a measure of draconian control. Yeah. No, I've thought about that. Using the, the, <laughs> the benefits to well, there's some benefits to doing the webinar versus the just the meeting capability, which would allow up to I think a hundred people. And we might use that instead. Tell you what, I'm going to reboot and I'll come back in, Christian. Okay. Be back. Excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, apologies for that. Uh, you know, that might actually, it, well, there's good and bad about that. What have you experienced in these uh, huge um, uh, activities on Teams? is that you're constantly asking people to mute themselves or just shut the traps because uh, you have bounced voices and, and other things. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're taking the written word. So sorry about that. Um, let me see. There's some questions that I always like to look at, uh, start off with the, uh, the Office 365 community that's out on uh, let me open it up uh, out on Facebook and see what the dialogue is. I know we had uh, some unanswered questions for folks that were in, and there's Joel. Let me Joel. I'm going to promote you to panelists. Uh, there's some questions that came in around the uh, education sector and problems that people were having um, logging in and and uh, accessing their license uh, in Teams. I, I apologize, I don't know, uh, the, you know the, the education sector and some of the issues around that. I know that a lot of login issues that uh, really come from, depending on how the licenses were deployed, um, there's problems if you have uh, multi-tenant logins. So I'm part of multiple guest networks but I also have multiple tenant logins. So I have, I'm a full fledged member with an email to three different environments. Uh, so my own and two partner environments or two client of mine uh, environments. And so you've got to be careful that sometimes if you log in, even as a guest into a session, if you are invited into a meeting with on the Microsoft tenant, and you access, like if I access via my collab talk, I can still get to that meeting. Um, but uh, if you, but it, it disables a lot of the capabilities. And so if I am, if I switch tenants, which is getting easier now, it's far quicker than it was six months ago. Um, but if I move over into that Microsoft guest network and then I have all the, the capabilities that are there, so. All right, and so see, Joel has not rejoined. Probably needed to go put some pants on or something. You know, that's a that's a problem for some folks working from home. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I I do have something for you. What yeah. I saw you on Facebook, I'm like, oh, uh, I've been watching. Um, all of these, uh, you know, groups of people that are um, that are singing songs in virtual, and I was thinking, yeah. you know, do some kind of uh, community karaoke. Oh, that that sounds as wonderful as it sounds, Joel. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you know, that's I, was, I was wondering, <laughs> how, you know, if if Zoom is the right platform, or Facebook, or maybe the way you're doing it, where you're kind of combining both, is the way to go. Well, so we did a, so with our little family uh, get togethers every Sunday. So my father-in-law attempted to play guitar and, and get everybody to sing along to a song. It did not work out. So latency people that were on phones versus strong connections. Um, and, and so the Facebook messenger group that it, it certainly wasn't, uh, wasn't a good solution. Maybe what we could do that on teams. Maybe we could do that in zoom. But right. uh, the right. Facebook was not the technology for it. <laughs> it wasn't as good as Jimmy Fallon's uh, group. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I think there was some other prep that happened there. So we have an attendee raising their hand. 
off and on. Oh, Sean, there he is. I see him. Okay. He's rejoining. Joel, are you going to join with video or are you in? Before, yeah, I, I need to find a hat or something. You know, <laughs> my, I haven't had a shower this morning. Hey there, Sean. Yeah, that's why I have my, uh, you'll like this. You'll appreciate it, Joel. So I still have my, my Sonics hat that I wear. Very I'm, nice. still, I'm still angry about losing the team. <laughs> I figured out what's going on with my uh, video last week. Oh, really? Yes. You, user error? You figured that out? Well, apparently, the camera did not like being plugged into a hub. Must be so, hub. Your, so your sentient camera <laughs> yeah. disliked. Skynet didn't appreciate it. <laughs> and so was uh, registering its dissatisfaction with me. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, let's see. Any questions come through? So, uh, oh, uh, Gene's got a question. Here, let me take a look. So, question hey, about Santa Jean. Claus. Hey. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> How's that? that? That's awesome. All right. See if you can uh, bring a gift here to Gene's question here. Uh, he's got a couple. He says, uh, question about Teams. One thing that is annoying is the fact that you can only see four participants' video. If you use Teams in education, that is something that is a big issue compared to products like Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a limitation of the product, unfortunately, right now. Yeah. Gene, that's not so much a question as it is a statement that we all agree <laughs> with. Yeah. Hey, Microsoft. And I, th I think that Microsoft's heard that one. I just don't know if it's something they've announced or not. Uh, they have not uh, that I'm aware of, but uh, yeah, they're they're working on that that issue. So yeah, they're painfully aware, I think, of many of the team shortcomings at this point in time, given our uh, wonderful internment yeah. as a nation. Yeah, yeah if there's anybody who knows how to get a preview of something like that. <laughs> I'd have be you happy guys have you experienced any of the throttling of features? They talked about uh, reducing the quality of some of the video and uh, some other, I don't know what the other reductions, that was the one that kind of caught my eye. There's anything um, else you guys have seen? I watched a granula, uh, very granular uh, Stephen Fry during uh, the last product meeting we had, MVP meeting. I'm not sure. But uh, other than that, no, I haven't. And I think that was probably a function of uh, bandwidth rather than, uh, or his own personal bandwidth rather than the product. Yeah, yeah. could have been throttling. throttling. Could have been throttling <clears throat> for him. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think that it's, uh, you know, it's interesting you see that where you start, really start to uh, look at the feasibility of something on this scale. I mean, you know, yeah. it, it's funny, you roll out these cloud services and you have, you go through and you do these scaling, these, these capacity planning efforts, but nothing really prepares you for real life and what happens. Uh, case in point, every time you go to a conference, a physical conference, and on day one, the Wi-Fi is crap, and then they adjust on day two. Yeah. That, that just right. happens everywhere. Right. Why are we still experiencing that? Do you think they learned the lessons of that? It's that... Yeah. Uh, off by one order of magnitude problem. We estimate you know, at one I, level and need 10 times that much. It's the promise of 5G as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, as soon as we get to 5G, it'll solve all this. And, but I, I, I think that as well, there's, there's a US thing where even though they know that they can give us better bandwidth, they choose not to. And uh, I've got some firsthand experience with um, and I'll call them out, Cox. <laughs> they they give me a limited and one. And that's the service, not the declaration yeah. of what they are. <laughs> right, 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 good call. They give me one terabyte of data. I've got five, you know, I've got three kids at home who are all, um, the five of us, who are all, uh, you know, watching and consuming. Even, even before the lockdown, one terabyte in a household just isn't enough. Like, seriously, why do you need to data cap me? And it goes, 
from it's it's like 50 bucks a month for my for my first terabyte and then uh, for the next um, 500 or it, they basically what is it 50 five bucks per hundred gigabytes after that or something crazy like that Wow. so I don't want to have to watch my data seriously you can't just give me unlimited to get unlimited I've got to pay a hundred hundred bucks I'm I, I, not that that translates around the world but still it's like double my I gotta pay double just to be able to get unlimited it's kind of dumb hashtag first world problems First world problems. Totally understand. Yeah. Well, we have the discussion here is that, uh, you know, the one, the, I'm on the Western side of the Valley. The East side has that, uh, has fiber, no fiber over here. Yeah. Uh, all the new construction and stuff over on this side of things. But, uh, so I, I was running the problem. I was paying for, I don't know what, what the throughput was of that connection, but, uh, was paying like 75 bucks a month for, um, so for like 40, I think 50 down yeah. and, uh, and, and it was just, it was spotty and, uh, and then we also had the metered connection and I switched over to Comcast business and I'm now paying 200 bucks a month, but it's, uh, uh it's a over 150 guaranteed SLA and, uh, I'm averaging about 180. So it's still not fiber, but, right. uh, in, until the last two weeks, you know, yeah. when we were empty nesters. So just two of us with my wife working out of the home and going to school, um, it was sufficient for my needs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll send so, you a jug of Metamucil. We'll get you yeah, some they, fiber. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It, so it, it all seems like it's a ploy to get people to watch TV is what I found. <laughs> it's like, oh, well. I remember one of the ways I want, I switched over to AT&T at one point because, oh, well, we, we're going to give you the phone. We're going to give you the, the, I thought you were talking coronavirus sponsored by, uh, <laughs> yes, <Netflix. yeah. laughs> seriously. And, uh, they, they basically said, we'll, we'll, we'll bundle all that and we'll reduce it by 20 bucks. But then a year later they jack it all up and you're like, I just want the internet. That's all I've wanted the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to bundle with all these other things. I don't care about those things. Yeah, yeah. then you got to go back to the guy with his trench coat and say, "Hey, give me that shifty deal you gave me a year ago," and go yes. through the whole process all over. <laughs> yeah. I got to do the same thing with Cincinnati Bell Fiber every year. Mm-hmm. I've actually set myself a reminder in Outlook: contact Cincinnati Bell this month because you're going to go up in price next month. And they'll say, "Oh yeah, we'll be happy to give you the latest promotion." I'm like can we do this automatically, please? I hate calling in. No, sir. We need you to call in. Okay. Well, I'm, I got nothing against you, but sure. We'll, we'll do it again next year. Same time, same day. Right. Right. Put it on his calendar. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Hey guys, I was just uh, looking through, I'm scrolling through the office 365 community, looking for any questions that have come up. There's a, you know, obviously a lot of posts, a lot of questions about people that are working from home and kind of, uh, you know, best tips or, or suggestions for teams, uh, for, for organizations that are, uh, to be careful with my use of the word teams, small T, <laughs> T, T teams, yeah. uh, for, for organizations that are, uh, are looking at how to stay connected, that kind of stuff. Uh, any other questions, any other product questions that have, uh, that have come up and Gene had that good question. That was something that we've heard frequently. Um, I see uh, uh, Adnan and Steven on as well. Guys, feel free to come join the discussion. Just uh, scroll down uh, on my profile, click on one of the links, just the bit.ly slash capital MS lowercase community one. Um, but anyway, any other questions that you guys have been you know, seeing? You know, the, the one that I seem to, to continue to run into is people who – They want to run their virtual events. They're not super comfortable with the team's meeting, but they're also not super comfortable with running it live. And some of that is because of the, it's, it's like with go to meeting and go to webinar, there's a clear divide. Hey, this is for meetings. Use this for your, your, your webinars. But I think in teams, it's, it's not as clear, even though, those of us, you know, who've used it a lot, we know that there's that 250 limit on meetings. Most events would be fine using the, the teams, 
just normal meeting, um, but knowing when to do it live and knowing when, when, when on the live thing, it's going to be complex versus just, just set it up, have one producer slash speaker and you're good to go. It's the, when you have multiple speakers, the people seem to be kind of flipping out and not knowing how best to, to manage it and, and knowing what all the intricacies are for when it's okay to do a team's live meeting, you know, the, the, the live broadcast. I don't know if you have any tips on that, but I've been in events where I'm like, Hey, let's do this over teams. And uh, a week before the event, they swap it out and say, no, 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 we're going to do this on zoom or do it on a uh, live live meeting or, or, or go to webinar or whatever. Um, and it's like, Oh man, there's another missed opportunity where we could have done this on teams, but didn't. Well, and some people, I, I got this a lot from doing these, setting these up. They're like, why aren't you doing these inside of Teams? It's like, well, the, the number one reason is that uh, we're also live streaming it. So and the idea is to get that bigger audience. And, and so I had, then had a couple of people say, well, then you could go and use this other tool to yeah. broadcast to live stream. I said, well, then what's the difference if, if I'm then having three technologies or two player two two technologies where I could just have one that does both things. You know, yeah, there's nothing wrong scary. with using the right tool to solve the right problem. <clears throat> and look, we live and breathe inside of, of teams these days. We do so much of our work inside of that. But you know, for me, and I know that you have the ability to do the broadcast, to do the, you know, uh, presentation mode, uh, the live meeting capability. Um, uh, which again, there's some, you know, to, to go and get that set up to broadcast it's, but it's generally teams is generally focused on your network, your tenant, your employees. It has that, that focus to do things for anonymous access and public and that link in with the streaming as like the technology is not there for Microsoft. It's, it's not what it's intended use is for that for teams. I know there's an awareness component too. Um, my wife and I were having this conversation yesterday. In fact, she, you know, she, like many of the other folks in academia, uh, my wife's a college professor. She teaches psychology and is now in the position of trying to conduct office hours, uh, meetings with her um, comrades and other folks uh, virtually. How do, they refer to, do they refer to each other that way? In uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> da. Yeah. Da. <laughs> nice. in any case she um this whole world of video conferencing is almost it's like a light turned on because they became aware of it out of necessity and everyone in that category seems to almost automatically gravitate towards zoom um she just thinks zoom is so you know it's it does everything she needs it to do and it does it easily and i said well you've got multiple tenants that you belong to. You've got teams access. What about teams? Uh, I, I don't know anything about teams. It's an awareness thing. Mm -hmm. um, and though the capabilities may work in many circumstances, like you said, Christian, anybody who wants just to make it work and they don't want to piecemeal a solution together seems to at least, you know, I've got only one data point to draw on, but I can say with certainty that, she and her um, fellow professors are the same way. They they just see Zoom and it does what they need it to do and it works great. So yeah. Well, it, it, here's a great example. So I have uh, you guys are probably both aware. So I use Calendly, uh, and and why that's great is so that uh, you know people that rather than having to do the emails back and forth to try and figure out, Hey, we need to get together. What's a good time that everything works. It's like, well, my, it's linked to my entire calendar. So you don't need to come ask me, uh, you know, when are you available? Christian, just go in and book the time and it's guaranteed it's available on my calendar. Um, cause I, I block out time, my travel, all that I block it out on my calendar so that I remember, you know, where I'm, where I'm going. Uh, which is right now nowhere. Um, but uh, um, those little integration points can make all the difference. Right. Yeah. And I, I do think that anybody who's watching would, would as well acknowledge that simplicity and ease of use is so important. 
especially when you're talking about family and you're trying to get grandpa and grandma on it, it's like it, if it's that much harder guess what it's 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 got to be easy it's got to be just click the link and it's got to just work the first time yeah. and I, I don't have to, energy well yeah. harjeet makes a great comment and he's he's on here might speak up in a second anyway but uh so he says that's because Zoom is known by the average consumer where Teams is more enterprise focused, which is ex exactly right. It's the, that's, sure. that's what they've gone after. If, so if Microsoft went and built an integration with Calendly where I could automatically through Calendly, it would schedule on my calendar and as me as the host, a Teams meeting, I would use that in a heartbeat and not use Zoom for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, Microsoft's gone open, <clears throat> but they're not that open yet. Yeah. And Harjeet, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, yeah, I, I you know, it, it's true. You know, Zoom is definitely well known by the average consumer, right? I mean, when you, uh, even non-technical organizations, whether it's an exchange student organization and stuff like that, that's what they use, right? So they are sending that stuff out. Uh, case in point, like my, because of this whole quarantine and stay at home situation, my wife's family, uh, who are also all over the place up in Quebec and Chicago and things like that, they started a Zoom um, video chat uh, about a week ago. And, uh, you know, do they know Teams? No, they don't. Uh, you know, that's, I generally prefer Teams because it's just, it's, uh, for me, it's just, you know, it's a one stop shop. It's, that's why I do my chats and everything like that. But mm -hmm. um, the average consumer is not going to know that. There's a lot of moving pieces that you have to do to get teams to work for them, right? Hey, uh, I'm curious. Can you make this? I mean, you, this is we're on Zoom, right? Can you make us Brady Bunch so we can? We're not looking at the black screen. <laughs> uh, we are Brady Bunch. Yeah, they just haven't cut in video. Oh, I see. And I'm probably on the mobile interface and not able to see that. I got to go rewatch the stream to be able to see us. Huh? Yep, yep, you're on there. So there's th three of us. So if, uh, and there's Shrun. Nice. <laughs> Good, classy entrance. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, I was going to show you, um, see if you recognize this one, Christian. Oh, yeah. I was just wearing it. I, you know, I'm really happy with that design. <laughs> for the, those that didn't, didn't don't know what that is, so for we just had our uh, so we rebranded our SharePoint Saturday uh, event in, here in Utah, and oh, we nice. now called the Microsoft 365 Friday. I like the shirt, Joel. And uh, so moving it to Good Friday, times. yeah. And so we also tried to create a design. So that was done by Greg's daughter. Put that together, and oh. hey, Sherm's sports colors. That's another one. That's nice. I say it's my design, but it's not. It was Rackley's brother-in-law who uh, oh. designed that. So mm. there's oh, that's all I had to do is swipe right. Yeah, Matt comes up with some good ones. Yeah, there he does is. a good job. Well, he's he's not doing them anymore. So yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of truth in this. Uh, I have no idea where the music is coming. No, it's not the music. It's the video. The video audio. Video, yeah, and music coming in, yeah. Well, um, yeah. So the uh, now I forgot my point that I was going to make about about that. Oh, yeah. So back to the uh, Calendly capability, some of the integrations. So I think we're um, this is the kind of stuff where we have these specialized requests. We just need to make sure. Like I've not gone and logged that. I'm not gone on user voice to see if somebody has has made these suggestions. Like right now, find time is okay. Uh, it's very limited. It doesn't really do what I want. And so that, again, that is focused on the enterprise. It's fantastic when you're juggling between, you know, 10 people on like three or four times. And that's a useful problem for the enterprise. Those stuff I need is more of the Calendly. I need it to be able to link to my calendar, allow people to go and to auto create a Teams meeting based on my availability. Uh, and and be able to share that link out to people. So I don't know if that's something that has been logged, but I'll uh, I'll magically wish it uh, for Microsoft to consider that. And tinkle tinkle tink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the sound effects. 
which tab in the yeah. browser was that coming through? Hmm. <laughs> well, I, I think as well, when you talk about something like integration with uh, Calendly, I can imagine be the Power Automate people as well. Be like, oh, well, you can do that by using this connector or that connector. And <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's not the integration you're actually looking for. <laughs> yeah, I know there's a way to do it. I just want it to happen yeah. easily. I don't want to have to tell my uh, my 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 mom or you know your your grandma what to do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, grandma, go build this flow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, any other uh, questions you guys have, have heard? I don't see anything else posted. I want to know what's what's happening up north in Canada. I haven't heard from Sherman yet. What do you want to know? Is How, Canada, how's life? Canada still exist. Canada still exist. Yeah, there's various reports, and uh, we had a pretty decent Sunday yesterday. And again, there's some apparently some people hanging out in. in are you talking about just in general? Or are you talking about teams? <laughs> I've heard they've resorted to cannibalism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just, just life's Canada. more interesting. Yeah, it's like life's yeah. more interesting with uh, with all this stuff, right? Technologies. Where, you, where are you at, uh, Sherb? Vancouver. Ah, Vancouver. Okay. Yeah. Did you guys hear about my story crossing the border about just over a week ago? Oh, no. dangerous maneuver where are you? there, Harjeet. So I live in Vermont, and the border is just about thirty minutes from my house, right? And uh, so my daughter goes to school in at McGill in Montreal. Oh, okay. And so after the borders closed and all that stuff, and that following that weekend, she's like, hey, I think I want to come home. I'm like, uh, okay. So I drive up to the border and I have my Nexus cut, right? No problem. You know, usually go to a Nexus lane. The border is dead. There's no one there. So I pull up to the Nexus lane and the guy's like shouting at me from the, from the building. Get back. Go to lane number one. I said, okay. So I backed up, go to lane number one. And the guy says, just giving me all sorts of business, right? Why did you go there? I said, I have, I said, it's Nexus. But why? Because I have Nexus card. You have it in your hand, right? So long story short, he says, where are you going and all that stuff? I said, I'm just going across, you know, uh, to, to pick up my daughter. He says, the border is closed. You know the border is closed, right? I said, yeah, I do. But I said, it's essential travel. I'm going to pick up. No, it's not. He says, why isn't your daughter taking a taxi? I said, what do you mean take a taxi? He said, we've well, never done that. So he's just like, basically like he's just denying me. Then at the last moment, I turned around and I said, by the way, I'm Canadian too. He says, you are? You got your documents? I ripped out my Canadian passport. And he's like, anything to declare? No, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only way I got in was because I have dual citizenship, right? So then on my way back, um, no problem, you know, ripped out my U.S. documents. And they're like, hmm, hey, they let you through? I said, yeah, that's really surprising because they're not letting any parents through at all. I'm, I'm, we're shocked. And then I got flagged on the U.S. side because of my international travels that I was doing in January and February, right, for Microsoft Ignite the Tour. And my last stop was in Dubai. And I came up as... Uh, <laughs> health risk or something like that. Quad S, right. They pulled oh. me over. They wouldn't that let me go in. Designation. Yeah, yeah, they give me a, a mask and then all this stuff. And they're like, okay, we might have to call the CDC. I'm like, whatever. So they come back after five minutes. All right, you're good to go. By the way, whatever could be 14 days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Get comfy, bring a book. Seriously. The last I travel was 30 days before that. So. <laughs> hey, Harji, where in Vermont do you live? Uh, Milton. It's about 20 minutes north of Burlington. Okay. Uh, I used to live in, in fact, spent many years living in Castleton, just west of Ah, Burlington. okay, yeah. For this house. Sweet. Well, here is a question that was just asked uh, yesterday over on the 365 community on Facebook. It says, I'm assisting with setting up Microsoft Team for a medium-sized business. I'm wondering if there's a way to link tasks in notes so one note to planner. Do I need to add them manually, or does anyone know of a free meeting agenda meeting and other integrations? She's asking for something. I'm not sure what she's asking for, but um, has anybody done that? Has anybody built any automation to link notes to planner? So 
chances are somebody's had that need. Um, I've not had it myself, but that's the sort of thing that I can envision. I, I think the APIs are probably there to do it. Um, maybe some adventurous admin wrote a PowerShell script to do it. Uh, there might be uh, flows to do that, but I, I'm not aware of anything. You probably have to do a lot of searching. You guys? Uh, yeah, I think that there's, uh, again, I'm looking at, so somebody responded to the question and said that there's, hey, you can use flow and there's uh, some out of the box. And I see, I don't see specifically the planner. I see the integration of this example just into Teams. Well, graph goes into planner, doesn't it? There's a, a series of graph APIs that touch planner integrations in front of it. Well, we had a few minutes ago, we had Levesque on the, uh, on the Facebook page. Maybe he's still hanging around and he can come and, uh, and answer whether he's aware of a specific. Somebody get Yurina, uh, Yina on the horn. She'd know. <laughs> yeah. And they got the hot phone, the red line to uh, Yina. Speaking of Yina, right now, it's the product manager at uh, Microsoft who is responsible for Graph. Yeah, there's a... Uh... Let me see if I can get another person is uh, Brian Jacket. Let me see if I oh, yeah. can ping him. He tends to respond on the hot phone. The hot line, I keep, I keep saying hot phone. Yeah. It looks like uh, some of the other responses <laughs> um, is that uh, you know, some people are using them, uh, so they're attaching them manually. Um, somebody else, uh, Jeff, Jill Neff Garnett, uh, says use OneNote with Teams, um, which is that's once one way of that's you know definitely a way to to solve the problems is uh, mm. well if you're using uh, you're automatically using OneNote uh, with all of your meetings. Just set that as the default to to generate those things and have those inside of Teams. Um, you're still then manually attaching those or go and create a flow, but those artifacts should then be in the system. I, probably the messiest part of setting up that solution is that if you are uh, if you don't create your one notes in that centralized location, like in Teams, then it's just uh, you know. It, it's going to be very manual every time to go and locate those. The one person I was going to suggest who would know this uh, is Heather Severino. Ah. She specializes in OneNote and Office 365 stuff, but she's not here. <laughs> yeah. We'll chat with her tomorrow. She'll be on the Tweet Jam tomorrow. Ah, okay. So. Yeah, and for those that uh, aren't aware, if you're interested, so there will be a so a, another technology that's not a Microsoft technology, Twitter. Uh, yes. We'll be doing a tweet jam tomorrow, so Tuesday, the 31st. Uh, it's happening at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, on I don't think I got that one. <clears throat> Birds will be tweeting. It's the uh, digital literacy. Yeah, it's one of those things, RG, where you've got to see like the post about it. It's at the end of every month, in the last week of every single month. I've been doing okay. it for uh, since <clears throat> January of 2012. I think I've only missed three or four months in all of those years. We um, got one today too. Uh, well, the tweet jam. Oh yeah, there's there's a lot of tweet jams going on, but this one on developing a strategy for digital literacy. Uh, and so it's over on my blog at Buckley Planet, and you can see the panel and anybody who claims to be an expert and wants to be on the panel and participate. Oh, whoa. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> anybody who's just looking for conversational time because no other humans happen to be around. Yeah. Or, or that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, just a quick note and aside, Christian, I will not be on tonight's session as well. And it's not because I've got my time zones wrong. Um, I've got a board meeting for the nonprofit that I'm part of. So no worries. Yeah, that we are going to be anybody that's on this that uh, wants to participate. So it'll be just at uh, what do we move it to 6 p.m. Pacific. So we this is the uh, EMEA time and then we're doing an APAC time later today. 6 p.m. Pacific. I moved it. So I had something for uh, the that was supposed to be tonight and next week, 
and it got moved. And so that oh, opened up. I will be on. Okay. Because you moved it. I'm looking at my calendar right now. So that's 8 p.m. for you. Uh, that's 9 p.m. for me. 9 p.m. for you. That's what See, I said. See, you did it too. <laughs> and you set the time. Yeah, it's yeah, 9 but, for me too. Three hours. But, but Sean, I was there though. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you set the time, you should be there. In theory, yes. I just could do the math last week or had the time zone off, really. I thought it was Pacific time. And silly me, you're not in Pacific time. Hey, here's a here's a question. I don't know the answer to for the Microsoft Teams, uh, the 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 limit to public live events presenters. Is there a limit? So I know yes. the participants is ten thousand. Yeah, the participant I, side, but I know, know that there's uh, fifteen wide that you can yeah, do in, in a given tenant. Yeah, that's the software. So like if you're planning an event and you want to have them all be running as live, basically fifteen is your max. But and that sounds what I'm like cacophony. Is, <laughs> if you were have 15 presenters, like everybody's doing it all in the same meeting, that would be interesting. <laughs> uh, interesting is not the word I'd use, Joel. But yeah, more than more than complex. Actually, I think I'd be more uh, OBS too. Oh, wait, so uh, it might. So according to the Microsoft Doc, says you could have up to 250 presenters, but only 10. The last ten who spoke show up in the list. Wait, that that so they, they must be talking about. They're talking about the regular meetings versus the live productions. Hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, because that yeah, two fifty is the meeting one. All right. Yep. Hmm. Two fifty. <laughs> so multiplexes ten audio feeds. But yeah, you would want people to go off and on and on and off of mute, obviously. But yeah, mute is again your big, biggest friend. We've been experimenting yeah. with live events at my work because of uh, actually today, right now, uh, is the uh, student admission day. So usually they come on campus mm. <clears throat> and stuff like that. Now they can't. So they've been so all these different colleges and departments within the university are doing live events <clears throat> so we had to go through about a week now uh, with uh, trainings and how to do uh, be a producer how to be a presenter how to push things like that so it's been really really interesting and uh, one thing we discovered is that uh, if you try to play a YouTube video inside of a live event it doesn't push out the sound you can see the video but it doesn't do the sound yeah. So you have to use like a third party uh, uh, sound tool. Uh, I think it's uh, the one we use is voice meter. It's free. And then mm -hmm. you got to do your configurations, your device settings and all that fun stuff. And then you can hear the sound out. So what I did, so I have my mic on a boom. And what I did is I swung it over to the <laughs> speaker and uh, the quality was not there, but it worked. Yeah. Sometimes low tech rules the day. Yeah. Hey, Harjeet, I meant to say, nice hat. Uh, thanks. <laughs> we lost Joel and his Santa cap. Joel, you're deliberately off video. There he is. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm on my. I'm using my phone. Because the way you're sitting right now, it looks like you're sitting potentially on something else. I'm, but I, I, I see I the background. I've <laughs> For some reason, my phone thinks I'm in. I'm driving. Oh. <laughs> that's interesting. If you can hear me, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So you. there's a button that says uh, "click this to speak," but it's I'm in safe driving mode, and I'm not sure how to turn off safe driving mode in Zoom. <laughs> Stop driving. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> hey, hell, <clears throat> is that a fake backdrop? Yeah, it is. <laughs> what are you using? <laughs> you don't want to see the rest of my. Took a picture of his room and. Yeah. <laughs> Posted it over. I'm sure Hal's is real though. Sitting in a desert sunset. Yeah. I was wondering as well if you guys could hear the somebody was mowing their lawn. I wasn't sure if that was picking up in the audio. No. Mowing no. lawn or car engine. I guess I guess you can mow your lawn in quarantine. 
Just keep your distance. What do you guys use for uh, custom backgrounds in uh, all these video chats, like Snap Camera and stuff like that? Or? Yeah, how would you Thank use you. now? Well, what I used basically was, was Zoom. They had an ability to, to stick in a picture for oh, that. Oh, they do? And I just, yeah. yeah. Oh. And I uh, just oh. looked around and found a yeah, picture. You go I down to the, the video settings, the, the start, stop video, and it just uh, choose a virtual background is. All you Zoom experts. Yep. So I'm just going to, I'm in San Francisco now. I'm hovering about uh, 20 feet off the ground, but, uh, but I am here. Yeah. Don't lean back. Yeah. Christian, is that your personal pick or is that like a list of. No, this is the generic Zoom stuff. I, I can't talk more right now because I wouldn't be able to breathe. Hang on. <laughs> Why don't I have that? Why I are my eyes not... bulging? <laughs> Reality check ahead. That's nice. There we go. Oh. And this version, as I answer you, I pound my fist a lot in my desk. Yeah. That's a fantastic background. Best background ever. Yeah, yeah it's, it's right underneath video settings. Choose virtual background and go. Uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go, Perfect. You know where that is? That is in Montreal, actually. It's the uh, convention center. That's very cool. Yeah, and it's really, really cool when you go on a on a day when uh, oh, Legos. A, every day, the sun will hit it, and the, the shadows inside are oh, colored. That, that's incredible. Amazing, yeah. <clears throat> So many more reasons, Sherm, why I'm looking to uh, why I'm looking to the north. Yeah, Montreal would be a pretty good choice, actually, to be quite honest. <laughs> See, any other questions? Uh, just looking at the different locations while I'm messing with my background image. I'll leave that. I guess one thing I'll kind of while you're still digging around there, Christian, uh, kind of circling back to Joel's question about Canada. Yeah. Uh, for a lot of, uh, especially here in British Columbia, I think Ontario is similar in terms of the privacy laws and what governments can and cannot use and go into the cloud. So a lot of them are kind of scrambling now because uh, for some reason, so, uh, both, both provinces are still fairly conservative in terms of going to the cloud. So it's uh, delayed their entries into Office 365. BC's just opened up. A little bit, but I think they're still uh, leery about, you know, and unsure about what to use and what they can and can't do, and blah, blah, blah. So, as Zoom is now taking off as well, as well as Teams, um, some places are going, well, why, why don't we use Zoom? Uh, it's a little bit easier to get into. The unfortunate thing is that um, the data is not on Canadian soil. So, that presents a problem. So, it's something that a lot of organizations don't have to think about. Governments obviously do, and uh, it's something to be aware of. That's one of the key things. Good to know. Well, there's a, again from a, a key differences with, between Teams and, and Zoom. And I read about. It. I saw that notice about uh, some of the integrations. I heard about that a couple months back, but I um, just saw it pop up in the news again that there's going to be some kind of integration between the two. Um, was the fact that again within an enterprise, uh, you're able to then capture record all of those meetings which is a fantastic ability to be able to do if, if we're having regular weekly meetings uh to auto capture that it it automatically goes in and then transcribes it translates if necessary um and then record uh, captures that recording inside the system so it makes it then a searchable asset within your knowledge base mm. and so that's something that you don't have with zoom you would have to then upload that video over into and then go through that processing. So you can automate that with Teams and just say, every time we do one of these sessions, I save it up into my environment. Uh, it, you know, if, I'm ha if I'm holding these in Teams, obviously we're using Zoom, so it's not gonna work, but uh, upload this video and it goes and does that transcription. And uh, I, I just love that capability to, to then go and build some of that additional automation and intelligence around that. That's where you're going to start seeing, you know, Cortana capabilities. So Cortana as a, uh, as a, an assistant, a digital assistant, uh, start to pull out says, Hey, you know, 15 minutes into this meeting that you had, it sounds like Sean, uh, you know, created a task to be accomplished 
should I create that task and assign it to you? Or let's assign everything to Joel because of the hat, whatever. I think you can automate that. Just if Joel wears the hat, if Joel wears the hat, then take this action. Assign him all the tasks. Sounds pretty clever. I understand why the ball of the hat keeps disappearing. Uh, Fades into the background. It's the uh, right. of the gravity of the situation. <laughs> We've got 10 more minutes. Any other any other questions that popped up? I mean, I've seen probably, I don't know about you guys, the areas where I'm seeing the most questions are in the edu education sector. And that is yeah. clearly because with the schools all you know, in lockdown and... It's, I find it's, it's a combination of education and government, which is kind of interesting. Because government uh, as well, there's a lot of confusion or teams is kind of very new to those in, in government and haven't had a chance to ramp up because it's so new. Um, and others don't even know whether it's released or not. Like I've seen a lot of people just asking about when does GCC get this feature or that feature? And I think what's challenging for the, for the people who are in enterprise, but just don't know that particular set of features and we don't spend our times in that kind of tenant, it's difficult to answer those questions. You know, what, I don't know if there's a really good simple place where you can go and just point it. Oh, okay. Well this feature or that feature or this tenant. Um, anyway, being able to let people know what's coming to, to education cloud versus government cloud versus commercial enterprise. It's, it, there's a lot of confusion. For what it's worth, Joel, um, I just posted a link in the chat window. And I just shared the, it over to Facebook as well. Yeah. Uh, office 365 for education. It lead title on the page is get office 365 free for your entire school it covers the various a plans what they cost as well as what you get with them great so, probably a good starting point yeah yeah there's i'm sure there's a similar resource for uh the government as well but it's classified <laughs> i could tell you but then i'd have to shoot you hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, besides those, those questions, which are, I mean, there's a lot of them, you know, anything else that has been popping up recently that you've seen and possibly even answered already for folks. If not, we could also talk about, uh, it was in our last eight minutes. Um, see, just talking about what we're going to talk about just killed two minutes. Good job. Uh, no, uh, you know, kind of work from home techniques. I mean, one of the things that um, you know, I, I'm trying to do more of, and uh, this kind of goes back to, uh, uh, you know, friends that are in the video production service, but it's just to, to do more um, video just, it, just in general. And so um, it's just trying to, to, it's funny. I, I've been working from home for more than a decade and yet, uh, I still enter meetings with video off. Um, I, I do a, a lot of. It has to do with your clothing choice, Christian. You also have to keep in mind the amount of bandwidth the video uses. I mean, we've got, for example, right here, six streams going, and uh, fair point, Hal. That uh, that gets to be taxing on systems. Yeah, especially uh, folks uh, on mobile. Yeah. Well, one thing, uh, <clears throat> working from home, uh, a tip for any of our listeners uh, right now is that to create what I've learned and what has been working well for me is the separation of space. So even if you're in a small, confined place, whether it's an apartment or whatever, you know, your bedroom is where you sleep. You know, your living room and couch is uh, is where you, you know, go for entertainment or watch TV and stuff. And then you know, so on and so forth. So the, the separation of space is, is, I feel like it's important because at first I was like actually sitting in my living room on a couch and stuff and, and trying to work from there, but I'm always working, right? All day long. So. Good point. And I feel like I'm being disrespectful to her here as we like continue to swap our backgrounds and. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> He's like, guys, snap to it. Get off. <laughs> it is. All right, guys. I will. 
I have to hop off and I'll join the tweet jam in a little bit here. Well, the tweet, oh yeah, you get the other tweet jam. Well, good luck with that. And, uh, you know, uh, well, let's see, we do have a couple more minutes. Uh, I was thinking, I, I like that idea though of separation. I think that is, uh, is important. Of course, easy for me. It's, uh, I, I've got my basement office here. Um, I'd like if I, yeah, so what I've done is that I've, I've uh, carved out a space in my basement too, you know, in a, in a corner. So the walk from upstairs to downstairs is like the walk to work, you know, kind of a thing. So when I need a little break, I go back upstairs, I'm in the kitchen, I'm getting my coffee and stuff like that. It really, really does help um, separating it out. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I would joke about, uh, so how was traffic on the stairs this morning? Yeah, well, slow down, you know, around the bend. Kids kind of got in the way, but otherwise pretty clear. One thing, I, and we, we talked about this last week, uh, I, I, it's important to get up and move around a lot more often. I mean, I've got my, my fruity device um, that reminds me to get up to breathe and to stand up and that kind of stuff. But uh, obviously with dogs, I'm out walking them, you know, three, four times a day anyway. Uh, no matter what the weather is, but I've increased my steps and I'm trying to, you know, at least once an hour, stand up, walk around, go do something just to give yourself. It's not just about the physical movement. It's the mental break away from that. Obviously there's some times where I'm completely, you know, uh, immersed in in a problem or a document or a conversation and something suddenly you look up and two and a half hours have gone by but it's important to have those mental breaks and yeah. yeah and That's that. one thing I did last week is I ordered a standing desk <laughs> for my work from home. I was, I'm getting tired of sitting down and usually, you know, I work from home like at least once a week. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm again on a, on a laptop and, you know, it's not, no big deal. It's just one day. Uh, but uh, at work, I have a standing desk and I never sit. You know, from the time I get in to the time I leave, I'm always standing and I find it, I feel more productive and more, you know, energetic, I, I guess, than slouching like this. Uh, <laughs> so I ordered one last week and hopefully it comes in this week. Yeah, I, one thing I'm going to add to this, and this is um, along the lines of, you know, mental health and keeping it all together. Um, I'm going to post a link in the chat there, um, and there are various links to it. For those of you who aren't familiar, uh, DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, is really kind of a, it's a therapy style that really it focuses on mindfulness, and there are lots of different techniques you learn as part of DBT that are beneficial in situations like this where we find ourselves isolated, um, some more so than others, but for folks who don't have the opportunity to interact with anybody in a household um, and, you know, video doesn't always work. Mindfulness is a great way to just, and the idea is you just anchor yourself in the here and now kind of come back down to earth. There are various techniques you can do. Um, this has been used for uh, treatment of all sorts of um, mental disorders, um, behavioral abnormalities and problems, but okay just as a technique set of techniques they are great to know and taking a mindful moment you know every now and then to just anchor in the reality of where you are what's going on does a lot of good and can leave you feeling refreshed you know people sometimes talk about meditation um, this is another set of techniques uh, not excluding meditation but you know every little bit you can get in your arsenal helps so I've got a book I need to talk to your wife about. Hang on. I can only imagine. It's under my uh, very large, my collection of throw, throw burrito games. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The kids have been dying to play that recently. Oh, just shifted. But is this? Psychoanalytic diagnosis. Who wrote it? Uh, so this is a so a textbook by Nancy McWilliams, 
Nancy McWilliams. I'll yeah, a longer conversation is this uh, uh, leadership development program that I went through that was uh, built by a uh, two friends, that one a psychologist, the other one a psychiatrist. The psychologist okay. worked in tech, worked for hmm. Boeing for 15 years or so. Interesting. And they went and they they created this program. And so it's, uh, you know, around the personality types and the idea of, you know, the to your point though, uh, something that's really big is being present. And so we're, we sometimes get so caught up and, and just to slow down and breathe and to be present in the moment. And it's uh, you're just so where it, it, it allows you to kind of turn off all of the noise uh, around you. And it's uh, and it's it can be difficult to do. It's a it definitely is a technique. It's like a muscle. You need to train it and to be able to yeah. get there and do that. Um, but anyway, it's fascinating stuff. A longer conversation around around this stuff. But uh, I have, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's it's fascinating. I'm not uh, you know a big fan of of how negative it all sounds. The personality types. <laughs> um, yeah. you don't want to go into a conversation and say, oh yeah, I'm a high functioning uh, psychotic. <laughs> yeah, that might well be alarming. Social circles, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I. So I went through uh, months of DBT training. Uh, so it's something you know I've been immersed in and really believe in. Uh, it's it's helped a lot. I've used some of it with my kids, um, and it's good stuff. So we ought to have a session on that sometime. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, hey, we're at we're at the hour, and if you're so for those that are able to join, if you, you know, think of questions that we'd like to ask, we'll be back this evening for another round but uh thanks everybody for participating all right thanks christian thanks for thanks putting these yeah. on yep talk to you later all right we're officially underway now and uh hello everybody so this is the part two so serving a a late north america or americas um on this monday evening here or an early tuesday uh in uh, asia pacific but uh, this is the Microsoft Community Office Hours, and myself, Christian Buckley, here, as always, with Sean McDonough, as always. Might as well as say As always. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Sure. Yeah, except we'll last week when we had a little bit of a misunderstanding of the complexity of time zones. And, this is uh, true. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I came on as you guys were signing off. Yeah, so that was great. It's like, why even show up at that point? You know, two minutes into it, but yeah. Yeah, my work here is done. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Excellent. Good job. Yeah. So, uh, if you have a, a your know, questions and would like to uh, join us, then uh, please uh, do so. Um, Otherwise, it's just us talking, and you're going to be right bored, trouble, probably yeah. more trouble than bored. Yeah. Because I think we've got some interesting things we can always talk about. Yeah. All right. Oh, and I see that uh, there is a way to add the uh, allow to talk for attendees here. So uh, learning something awesome. new every day of uh, how to engage with folks. So you can use, if you're uh, joining us via the Zoom, uh, we're also live streaming out on Facebook in a couple different locations. Uh, so I'll be checking there uh, on any questions, but you can post wherever you're finding us, you can post your questions and uh, we should have some others joining us in as part of the panel. Uh, but feel free to uh, ask away. And um, yeah, early Tuesday in Ireland as well. So, well, good morning to you. It's bright and early uh, in, in Ireland. Top of the morning to you. Uh, so Patrick has a question here. Well, actually, first, before we start with that. So, Sean, why don't you uh, uh, finish up with the from earlier today, the question and the, the answer you found. Yes, uh, we were asked during the earlier session, what about uh, OneNote and Planner? And can, is there a way to facilitate movement of, I think, tasks? It was specifically called out as tasks uh, from OneNote to Planner um, via the Graph API. And I found, uh, well, actually Brian Jacket found my good buddy, Brian Jacket, he found um, the endpoints. They are readily exposed. And we've got a couple links to help you on your way 
as you um, integrate those with either Power Automate um, or build a custom solution, whatever you choose to do. But the data is available through Graph, and you can get it out of it, out of uh, OneNote and into Planner via Graph. Yeah, there's there's a lot of goodness that's going on. Of course, um, there's announcements around the uh, the you know, the future of tasks across all of Microsoft 365. And there's a video that was released. It's out there. Uh, in fact, Karawana Gatimu from Microsoft, um, part of uh, Teams, Microsoft Teams Engineering, uh, did posted the video to her. Um, I think she put it on her Coffee in the Cloud channel on YouTube. That was back in, I think, November, October, November. Um, I think it was aligned with Ignite last year. Uh, but there's, of course, a lot of messaging out of Microsoft on what's happening with tasks and the, it, it, I've blogged about it. We've talked about it a little bit on, on here. I'm doing sessions on tasks. Uh, there's a lot that's available. So uh, there's a more coming this year around tasks and uh, you know, what we've seen with tasks and teams and they're leveraging um, you know, the, the, all of the various components that are inside of uh, tasks. So basically you'll be able to see a task whether you're creating it, whatever surface you're creating it within. So if you're creating a task, it happens in Outlook or in OneNote or even in Word, like when you at mention and create a task, assign somebody to go and add information to a co-edited document. It, it, you'll be able to create a task and it'll be, you'll be able to surface that information in Planner and inside of Teams as well Intelligent as- Intelligent surfacing, yeah. yeah. Really cool stuff that's happening. So, um, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's you know, um, Graph remains Microsoft's one solution to rule them all as far as getting access to data in the cloud. Universal API. That's right. Universal API. Good yeah. way to put it. Well, we've got a couple questions here, Sean. So we'll uh, uh, dip our toes into these. All right. So uh, Patrick is asking. Have you heard any new information about OneNote for iOS getting handwriting recognition? Hmm. No, I have not. <laughs> I unfortunately have not either. Um, yeah, are, are you talking about are, like the OCR capability just in, in you know, no, I'm, I'm not up to speed on that. But if we're not able to answer these questions during the session, if we don't have somebody join who can answer that, um, then we will go and as Sean did, we tapped into our, uh, our good friend Brian and uh, try and find the answer. So I, I will go take a look at walk through those. Sure thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Patrick also says, is Visio going to be integrated or is it still out in the cold? Mm, I'm still using Visio. In fact, I'm using Visio to put together a blog post. Well, not the blog post content itself, but well, actually, some of the blog post content, I'm putting <laughs> rewind. Do this over again. <laughs> yeah. So I, Visio out in the cold, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, Visio is still front and center for the things it's always done. Um, I... I'm building some class diagrams in Visio right now with uh, um, a couple of stencils and add-ons. Um, in fact, I can even, well, these, I got these a long time ago. I don't know. They were freely available, but if anybody likes to build UML, UML models, unified modeling language. Nobody likes that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I lived in that world in a past life. I do recall that, yes. Yeah. 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 But I'm a big UML fan. So um, yep. Visio does a good job with it. Visio itself that has the UML capabilities, but it, um, it enforces some really hard, you've got to put everything together. Uh, the stencils I've got allow you to use UML shapes. Um, and whatnot with no constraints. So you can draw whatever you want. Um, so let me see if I can 
find that. I think one of the, the issues too is that people have kind of lost sight of what's what's happening there because I believe that the Vizio likes additional licensing. It's not part of, I don't believe it's part of E3. It might be part of E5. Um, or I don't know what the licensing but, deal is with Vizio. I, uh, honestly, I, I'm not, I used to be a huge Vizio person bef prior to Microsoft acquiring the company. Um, and I've just, uh, you know, I, I haven't been over the last uh, few years. I mean, it's still, they've, they've added a lot of really cool stencils. And I remember pushing, this was like, what, eight years ago, pushing Vizio to add um, all of the infrastructural components for, uh, you know, for like SharePoint. So you could go yeah. in and do mock-ups of your architecture. And, and they, they, when they went and added a bunch of those things, it's really cool. But yeah, Marcy's on there. Marcy is, uh, why don't you just jump in the conversation over here, Marcy? Why are you hanging out on Facebook? Come on. Um, <laughs> but she's saying, says, I use Lucidchart to create process flows and then export to Visio, still use it. Yeah, no, it's still out there. I mean, I've, I've got it. I've got it installed. It's been like a year since I used it. Um, but it's, it's getting a lot more intelligent. In fact, I think it was about two years ago where they were talking about it was at one of the MVP summits, may have been three years ago, but we were referring to it as Visio as a service. And <laughs> I just haven't been following it closely. So I'm just out of the loop on what's been happening with it. Yeah. I mean, I've got Visio open on my desktop right now. So it is an active user one. Someone's humble bragging there. I got <laughs> it on my desktop right now. Got it open on my desktop, rather. Uh, yeah, I yeah. pasted a link in the um, the chat to the stencils that I use for UML, um, and it goes back for various. Uh, it goes back to Visio. Well, it's up to twenty thirteen now, and we've got UML two point five support. So, you know who uh, Kendall Scott is, right? The UML, Mister UML. Name rings a bell, but yeah, because he wrote know. a bunch of the, all the books on on UML. Anyway, he he's co-author of my third book. Oh, so anyway, yeah. Haven't Name talked to drop. him. Kendall, haven't haven't talked to him in a while, but uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, I got in touch with my old editor from that back in my. That was my. Um, wow. For those that don't know what we're talking about, so I, so I had a startup back in the late 90s that we sold to Rational Software in January of 2001, and, uh, and then they got bought by IBM, I think later that year, or like a year later. Um, and all that stuff and, got uh, rolled All that fun stuff, so yeah, so I Rational wrote process. three books in that world. Yeah, good times, good times. All right, uh, let me take a look at other, other questions on there. Um, so, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, Patrick is talking about illegal use of licenses on laptops. Yeah, so I don't know what the question is there. <laughs> I'm kidding, Patrick. Yeah, or maybe. I don't know. You get a five finger discount on the Visio <laughs> license. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, and Patrick is saying that he's talking about Visio again. He'd like to be integrated so his kids could use it for diagrams without having to purchase a license. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I don't know the extent of the Visio licenses, how many devices you can have that on there. I thought it was with most of the, like the Office 365 stuff, I believe it's five uh, yeah. installations, five devices you can have that on. Yeah, I thought it was uh, under the same rules as well. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's the leader in that category of products. It's funny, I just went and uh, did a search in Visio and Office 365. And like the first, uh, of course, there's Visio. Um, no, the, it, the first one, two, three, four results I get back are all um, number one competitor or alternative to Visio. Yeah. <laughs> So someone's failing at SEO there. I guess. Yeah. Uh, any other questions out there? Any, anything else that's, uh, you have questions about Teams, about SharePoint, about any Office products, anything inside of Office 365 that we may or may not be able to answer? 
or make fun of happy to or make fun of yeah talk about our inability to answer things (laughs) yeah because dealing with this yeah we're (laughs) you never know i'm gonna put the uh the link to join the the zoom if anybody would like to come over then uh there we go Did I, did I write? Yeah, there it is. Now it's a link. Did you get it right this time? I did get it right. Thank you, John, for pointing that out. Very good. I got the link right, and I was also on time. And you were too this time. I was. <laughs> you know I'm not going to just let that drop. It'll, <laughs> no, it'll be doing this in a month. Nor month should you. Later. Yeah. On day one, here's what Sean did or didn't do. Didn't. Did an uh, alternate reality. Any chance of a Zoom like magic number sign onto Teams? Magic what? number sign on to Teams. I don't know what that means, Patrick. Nor do I. What's with the rumor about free Teams license for people? Tried to get it set up for my parents and got stuck in an endless loop saying they need to sign up. What am I missing? Yes, Marcy, user error is a complex topic to discuss. Um, what you specifically did wrong, I, I don't know. But um, <laughs> uh, you, know, I, you know, I've heard uh, people having this, this issue. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know the, the answer to that. Have you seen that or seen any of the responses to it, Sean? No, I haven't. Um unaware of this situation uh, people having trouble signing up for free teams yeah apparently well at least marcy <laughs> she she's telling me oh, oh, omg i'm getting on zoom now shut up <laughs> uh, well uh, yeah there's your response i guess uh, i like the uh <laughs> And then Mackenzie is uh, sharing with the world that coronavirus was created by the U.S. government. Thank you. <laughs> I just showed my kids the John Oliver segment. Oh, where you, see that. Uh, the most recent one, yeah. Oh, I'll have to, if you look at my Facebook wall at another okay. time, yeah. It's pretty funny. Darkly humorous. Yeah, I, I I love his stuff. I, I I may not agree with him politically on everything, but I do enjoy people who point out uh, absurdity, stupidity, and other such things. And he is there's fantastic. plenty of that in this segment. So yeah. yeah. So all right, still waiting. Uh, yeah. So um, Patrick, if you uh, scroll up, I shared the the Bitly link over to it. So if you join in as an attendee on Zoom, and I'll, I can add you as a panelist. Yeah. Is it asking you for? It shouldn't be an. It shouldn't be an ID on there. It should just be click. There you are. Get reflector out of the way here. John. Hello, John. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? What's what's going on? Yeah, pretty good. How about yourself? Pretty good. We're holding up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, uh, I just went around the block over there and like like in my where I live, and like there's these guys who have like fencing all around their neighbor, like their their house. It's crazy. <laughs> they even had like a like a hazmat suit out. It was. Like, <laughs> Really? Well, man. You know, that, that sounds pricey because I saw on Amazon that you could get one of those giant balls that you can get into and, and <laughs> you know, lock that. It's, like a hamster. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, hazmat suits can be pricey depending on, you know, level A, level B, level C. Yeah, I'm going uh, to get rid of that one, so. There we go.
So Patrick, hang on. Hey, Patrick. You're on mute, Patrick. There we go. Got it. There we go. Hey, Patrick. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Doing great. Yeah, my question about the Teams thing, that whole um, magic, the meeting ID thing that Zoom uses, it would be nice if we had something like that in Teams. Otherwise, you end up having to drop the link and do an invite. Hmm. Yeah. You see um, what I'm saying? Um, I don't follow. All right. In Zoom, you have the meeting ID number. Right. You don't have an equivalent to that in Teams. No, you've got to have the link. Right. And I guess some people who have difficulty with those links, because whatever they're accessing or the security at their site won't allow links. So if I give them a meeting ID, they can go in. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, it would be nice to have something like that. But um... yeah, it, I, part of it, and we talked about in our session this morning, that's just a little bit different uh, it, it, because it's for, you know, they, they've not pursued some of the features which are common with anonymous access, like some of the problems that we're having with people jumping on and talking crap, you know, in the, in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, and so having, you know, they, it's, it's a more controlled environment because it's meant for enterprises rather than like a webinar and allowing anybody yeah. in there. So it's I'm a social service agency and we have clients who have cell phones that want to get in on the chat and we're, they're not part of our enterprise. They're just normal people off the street. And, and we can't give them the required security to get them in on teams. So right. we have to. Use them. Yeah, there's, um, you know, and there's, uh, I know that there's, uh, you know, you know, extranet solutions that allow, you know, different, different capabilities. Um, there's, um, I, I know a lot of requests for Microsoft to provide some, you know, simplified access and exactly what you're saying. So if I could just, you know, share a, a link or anybody can go and log in their environment and use like in zoom and use a, you know, a, a one meeting password, uh, to get into that. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, I've seen the request in there. I don't know if you've seen, if you look to see if it's in user voice. Um, I haven't. As they say, I don't have much control over the actual IT department on our side. Yeah. I well, just sort of, you know, you can, I have a, You can I still go in, uh, I mean, a couple things. I mean, in user voice, you can see if somebody else has logged it. If not, you can go and create it. doesn't matter if you're in right. IT. Um, you can go, anybody can go in there. And, uh, you know, it, so it's, uh, it's something that you can, um, you know, you can go in there and request if well, somebody they has to have a team's client on their phone, wouldn't they? I'm sorry. I missed the first part they, of the question. Well, they have a team's client installed on their phone. It, it doesn't matter what you have it installed. I mean, user voice is independent of that. Oh, okay. okay. To make the request. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I'm working with homeless people, low income people who barely have enough computer skills to use the phone and get on gotcha. the web. You know, so the fact that like all I'm doing 19 different Zooms a week at the moment because of our coronavirus thing. Yeah. And you know, we, we use teams internally and I'm having to flip back and forth, flip back to teams, talk to my team here and then back to zoom to communicate it. It's just incredibly frustrating. Yeah understood yeah no I, I agreed i think there's uh, that's why you have a, a lot of um um you know folks that are um uh, sorry folks that are, are are have these scenarios where they just need to you know quickly and easily add um solutions that are looking at these other extranet solutions you know, teams is just uh, it's a little more structured but uh yeah. that's why i said i highly recommend you go um and uh, and make sure that you know ch check out user voice under Teams. Just do right. a search in there, see if anybody has uh, entered something. And if not, if you end up creating one, um, then share that out there. If there are more, I think it's five or ten people have responded, like upvoted your user voice, then Microsoft will respond. Okay, good. 
Yeah, it does. It's a pretty low barrier for them to go in, at least take a look at it. And they'll usually respond back and to the take a look at it. And if it is part of a, of a this on the roadmap somewhere buried, we didn't see it or something, then they'll, they'll uh, share that information or they could come back and say, we have no plans for this item. Uh, but at least then, you know, and you can say, Hey, here's what, or they could come back and say, you know, Hey, articulate what it is exactly you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, and then the office licensing thing, you know, did, did you quite catch what I was after there? Because we've got four people in the house. We've got four more connections externally for school, friends, teachers, what have you. And office is licensed per device. So, you know, we end up with this weird situation where we have to create a fake email ID, buy a license for it so that devices in the house can have an office copy usable once we hit the limit of six licenses. Because yeah. quite often we'll have like group projects or whatever for kids and they'll have their friends over, they'll all be using Office or Word or whatever. And we've got these family licenses that we've created so that we can get ourselves plus the kids on and get them, everyone working together on a, a six person license or actually two six-person licenses. It's another one of those slightly weird situations, but this homeschooling with the coronavirus is really pushing numbers on that right now. Right. Yeah. Well, that's one you know, reason I was hoping that Marcy was going to join us with her question about the free teams and understand uh, you know, the issue that she's going through. <sighs> Marcy, Marcy, Marcy. Yeah, sure Maybe she ran off with Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Social distancing. Exactly. Anyway, well, hey, well, Patrick, thanks for uh, for jumping on. Oh, yeah. no problem. No problem. No, I, I've been with Office for ages. I've still got the standalone version of Teams that they dropped at one point that seems to have disappeared once they decided to make it part of Office 365. Remember that one? Uh, well, it's always been a cloud service. I'm not sure which. Right, but there used to be a downloadable version of Teams that wasn't specifically tied to Office that you could use to access an enterprise. Standalone? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Not familiar with that. Yes. Okay. Up they go. Yeah, I've been. Uh, you know, we we first saw Teams as MVPs. We heard about it and saw it. Well, I guess what the we officially we saw it with the, the the launch. But you know, I I've been using it, running my business on Teams since uh, January first of uh, about three years ago now. So yeah, it's been a cornerstone after Skype. Oh, uh, it's great for business. Don't forget about that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. So I take a Skype for business goes away, Skype goes away, and it all gets replaced with Teams. That is the roadmap. Now, the other thing, I have one of those weird domain name connections that they were offering for a while that they sort of since deprecated. When you pay for the uh, office license with advertising, eliminated you pay that 20 bucks or whatever hmm. and in return it also lets you set up a domain name it was originally hmm. aimed at small businesses and i i still got it. i i hope it stays there otherwise i have to go get a domain name again was this a microsoft offering yeah. or third yeah. party microsoft you can pay hmm. to have ads taken out of outlook but you could also set up a domain access Hmm. So you could go uh, pwingert at red17labs.org, go register Red17 Labs, set up the uh, domain information, and your email would come into Red17 Labs and go into your email box. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, – have you gotten any communications from Microsoft? I would assume you would. Not recently. At one point, they've officially discussed continued it but they've kept it for the people that already had it i had grandfathered in yeah 
And, you know, it's sort of, it's really handy because it means that I can go to sites where I'm required to have a business address and use that. Right. You know, even though I'm most of the time operating under my own name as a business, you know, so I'm using Hotmail or whatever, and <clears> the site won't take it. If I go in under red17labs.org, it'll take it. Sure. Yeah, I understand that. And I'm sure Christian does too. Yeah, um, just responding back to a couple other questions. Um, uh, so just apologize to uh, jump it in here. But uh, yeah, so Richard was asking uh, the reasoning for using Zoom versus Teams meetings or Teams live meeting, pros or cons. And it, it, uh, it, as I responded to back that uh, the reason why we're using Zoom for this is the live streaming. So, uh, you know, for doing something like this, like we, we talked about this, hey, why don't we just um, use Teams and have everybody in there? The one other feature that I like is like we had earlier this morning, we had six people on screen, six Brady or seven bunch. at one time, which you Brady can't do going. in Teams today. No. Uh, and so being able to have, you know, everybody fa everybody's faces up there, but it's really about the live streaming. And why are we live streaming on Facebook uh, is because that's where we see a large amount of the community congregating and to be able to reach people. So, uh, you know, rather than doing email and, and social blasts out to, Hey, come join a broadcast of a, uh, of a team live session, uh, a broadcast in which you, know, you are limited then the number of people that can co-present. And then we can't have this level of interaction that we're having now with with people jumping in, so. Yeah. And hey, people that aren't part of your organization. Exactly. Right. Well, and, and so Richard points out, says, I did read that Teams is going to add more than four attendees. Yeah, so we're waiting for that. That's been talked about. It's been a, a highly requested feature that we're just waiting for that. Oh, I see Marcy now. Let me, let me. Marcy and Sherm's here, too. Oh, Yay. Me... Yeah, well, we've had a 16-person Zoom up this morning. For our bread making seminar. Nice. Bread making. Yeah. That There's a lot of talk about making bread. He actually bread. does the whole process, and then everyone that's zoomed in can see the process for making bread at home. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. I just, we do uh, language teaching. Uh, we do decluttering, you know, so socially relevant, client focused what? seminars. Now see, so we've got uh, Sherman on, almost, almost here, and Marcy as well. But you can't see my face, right? Why don't we correct, why, Marcy? Why see your face, Marcy. Ah, come on! Uh, it's because I had Teams open, I think. Oh, it's just oh, yeah. so it's not allowing you to. It you won't let my camera. That was so like a Don Knotts response, Marcy. Oh, there it is. Uh, I oh, saw you oh, through the bedroom window. Uh, <laughs> So I, I think I understand what uh, Patrick was complaining about a minute ago. <laughs> I, I can't switch from Teams to Zoom immediately. I don't even know how. Mm. Anyway, I, I think I have to leave and come back. Well, you, you could you could come in through Skype though, because Skype and Zoom work well together. Yeah, that's true. There's always a reboot. Yeah, Stop, Marcy, leave guys. and then come back. I could have got in on Facebook or on Facebook Live, but it was really weird when I first joined. All of these people who are definitely not into SharePoint joined because I think that when it said I was joined, I was live on Facebook. Um, everyone got an announcement that I was live on Facebook, oh and boy. I bet they were so disappointed to watch Christian and Sean chip. chip <laughs> That's generally the response for Sean and I. So we're yeah, to, definitely uh, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the best. Okay, I'm gonna I'm jump out. Right. Okay. All right, and Sherman, the cat up if that would help. <laughs> hey, I think she was. Uh, I think she was starting a a Facebook watch party or something. That's what was going on. Yeah, well, that that's what happened too. I've got a uh, yeah, I've got the wa watch party that's uh, broadcasting over on the Office 365 community. Uh, so that's going. It's it's uh, streaming on my my page as well. And uh, oh hey, and, I, and you know hello Eden. So my uh, baby sister just jumped on. Really? So, yeah, she's over she's in the Midwest somewhere. Family. Oh, <laughs> we've got family. And uh, let's see. And then uh, Marcy will come back. Marcy's awesome. So I'm glad that she'll be on and. 
She'll uh, ask her, pose her question uh, that uh, we've already determined that Sean and I can't answer it. Maybe Sherman can help. <laughs> Marcy's the, just west of me. Uh, Plenty of social distance between Cincinnati and uh, Indianapolis. Yeah. Well, I'm coming in from Toronto, Ontario, so. Ah, yep, north, hey. Yep. I just wish the YouTube would realize that they give everything in American price. Then you go to Amazon, they double it again. And there's the dogs. Yeah, we get reamed pretty badly up here. Yeah. Sherman, it looks like you're adding. Adding what? I don't know. You tell me. Adding? You're making these minor mouth movements. And oh, no. I think it's... So you, I think it's because, so I only have, I think the, the whole background thing, like, you see that? Mm -hmm. That's actually like the lake or something. Actually, that reminds me, uh, that new technology that teams are supposed to have for silencing background noise, is that going to be part of the family edition or not? Christian, you're on a mute. Yeah, so I was, yeah, so, so yeah that's, that's also, uh, this, that's forthcoming. Yeah, in fact, there was... Um, I'm trying to think if the if there was an update, Office 365 update that just said it's it's forthcoming or is an article. No, you know what it was? It was a Redmond magazine article. They're talking about some of the uh, the features that they're they're pushing out um, uh, in, here in the next. The way they were presenting it in that article, if I if I'm thinking the same one, is it was only for enterprise. Mm, I didn't read that. I, I don't know they had, how they would determine which are enterprise and which are which are not, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they could license us as a family, they've obviously got that figured out somewhere along the line. Yeah, we just have to check the license. That's why I'm interested to hear. And Marcy, are you there? I am here. Can Still you hear having me? video issues? Can you hear yeah, you? Yeah. It's just, do I want to use a different one? Um, I don't have a different one. Why is it? I, I don't know. Do you have Teams open still? No. Oh. It's still yeah, running that's, in the background. Yeah, usually that's the case with it. It's, it's still a... running in the background. And then we have to go through this whole thing again. But I want to show you guys this really cool background while I see this. We'd love to see it. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. One more. How long does it take for Teams to shut down? Because I don't want to do it again. So, Patrick, we have just yeah. given um, everyone an uh, they understand now what your question about switching or your, your challenge about switching back and forth between teams and yeah. um, zoom. So this I would call user error because I have to remember to close it every time. It's generally and user error. The other one is not, it is definitely no, a Microsoft loop. Yeah. Um, but I'll ask the question so you guys can jibber jabber about it while I go out and come back. But, yeah. um, so I was trying to, you know, everybody's talking about Zoom, um, Teams is free uh, for everyone now in limited capacity, um, but, you know, people can have Teams. And I was like, I don't know if my right. mom and dad qualify. Uh, I can't really find do. anything on it. Um, and so I was like, let's just download it. Got him a new computer, was installed, gave him one of my wow. licenses for um, Office 365, got him set up. And then I'm like, let's do Teams now. And so I download Teams, and then I they're they're already signed in, and when I open Teams, it says sign sign up. So I click sign up. That's my only option. And then really? it takes me yeah it takes me to a login. I log them in again, and um, and almost all of this is remotely. I installed Team Viewer and then ran out the door. <laughs> so I was doing most of this remotely. So I don't know if that gotcha. has anything to do with it. Um, but the, uh, it takes me to sign in, I sign in, Teams opens back up and it says, sign up. <laughs> and then, but I look in the top right corner and it says signed in as my dad's name. And I'm like, so okay, I try it again. I click sign up and it takes me to a login again. And we just do, I just was like, I don't know how many times I can do this, but there wasn't any other option. I think that is a case of this new Teams feature is supposed to drop till April 21st, is it? 
you may be working on the enterprise version because I get that same thing when I try to go in myself because I don't have a business license of Office 365. I have an E3 license. They have no license for, they have like um, just a business user license. But they can't. Marcy, that sounds like basic authentication issue. Well, it happened to my sister as well. We were going to all play Euchre. Um, we were planning on how to, how to enjoy each other's company um, and while we were online. I mean, while we were in quarantine, and this did not work for us. Um, so we're all sad, and now my mom's like, well, do you Zoom? And I'm like, are you kidding me, Mom? She's like, yeah, it's super easy. Well, I can't wait to tell her this funny story. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But maybe I won't have to be her IT person anymore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <clears throat> it's been a pleasure. All right. I'm coming out, leaving and coming back. Hi, Sherman. I didn't get to say hi. Hey. Okay. Yeah. The authentication issue with uh, Teams and being part of, you know, multiple organizations with multiple IDs. That is something that Teams just does not do well. And these days, many people work for many different organizations um, and have different IDs. So if Zoom well, we'll handles that. Our own business plus an enterprise that we're contracted to. That's quite often common. Yeah. So. I know that uh, oh, Redmond's aware of it, hey, but hey, hey Marcy. Marcy. Hey. I know they're aware of it in Redmond, and I want to say like two or three summits ago, MVP summits ago, we were told that they were working on a solution to like federate, but we still do not have a viable solution other than to sign out or to kind of co-opt both the team's client as well as the web interface with incognito modes and um, Chrome, uh, different uh, Chrome profiles. profiles. I don't want incognito mode. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. I don't blame you. You know, so I had an interesting issue. It, it was uh, inadvertently resolved um, doing something else. But what it was, so as I mentioned, I was used, started using Teams and running my company on it day one, three years ago, so shortly after launch. And um, uh, it had, so I had uh, not guest access, but I had uh, full access to three, so my own tenant and two other tenants. So I had emails for these two customers and would log in as an employee into those environments. So I would, you know, so a toggle or I would, you know, go and log out, put in right. the credentials, log into the other environment. And there's something that happened and it was when they uh, enabled the guest access. Um, but it, essentially it, I was logged into one of my customer tenants in the Electron desktop application. Uh, and it essentially it burned in the credentials for that login and from there going forward would only allow me on both mobile and desktop versions, I could only log in to that Ooh. customer. So I couldn't get into my own environment except through the browser. At the time, there was not parity between the capabilities. Long yeah. story short is that, that, ha that it went on for about a year and I did multiple calls to Microsoft trying to root it out and it was reinstalling stuff and it couldn't figure out. And it was actually a conversation with Michael Knoll, so a fellow MVP, um, who talked about um, seeing this issue that it was an Azure AD issue. And so I, it was frustrated by long phone calls with, with Microsoft support um, and even having premium support going through that. Um, but there was an you know, entirely different issue where uh, support was going through and they essentially reset my profile and cleared like the Azure AD, like whatever was cached and whatever stored there, kind of reset everything up and it restarted it and it has fit and it fixed the problem. So, and Michael basically confirmed, he says, yeah, there's just something that's cached on your ad against your Azure AD that's causing that problem. I'm not <clears throat> saying that that issue, uh, that's what is being experienced in this, the, you know, in some of these scenarios, 
Um, but it's just one thing that you should go and look into. Um, you know, so uh, you look yeah. at about the Azure level. Hal just dropped a uh, a link in the. Hal's on here. Hal, you can talk. He's he's muted. He's, he's muted, muted, but he dropped the link in the. Uh... Yeah, there, Hal. Up. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, hey, Hal. Yeah, we hear you. Okay, very good. That link is something that I ran across uh, earlier very today. Um, I think I've still got it. Which is which is a way to clear the Microsoft mm -hmm. Clean Teams client cache, which is. Uh, I had a problem earlier. Great today. image I'm, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and so in my scenario, like I I ran through that 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 didn't solve the problem that I'm talking about. But there we go. But it could it could solve others, other issues. Yeah, I'm gonna hold on yeah. to this one, Hal. Thanks. Yeah, well, then that's something that I've got to kind of try because uh, I have I have kind of issues with this. I've got a company client, which means I've got a a, a company login and an at Roland Shore address. Also, for half of the stuff that I do with Microsoft Teams, the various Teams channels that are coming up for Excel or PowerPoint or what have you, those uh, have my uh, at live.com address. Mm -hmm. And therein lies the problem because while I'm, I'm part, the, 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 the Roland Shore address is part of the, of the my Microsoft Glitch guest tenant, uh, only those channels, teams that have that address as part of them show up, which means like, for example, the summit, I had to log in as uh, TV wizard, well, the, the live, anyway, I had to use that account and um, the channels that are assigned to that showed up, the summit showed up, but none of that shows up in the other tenant. So I'm yeah. constantly having to come up with methods of trying to, to change tenant, tenants. And I've got one issue right now in one of my browsers where I say, log me out uh, of, uh, of, the, of the business business tenant and it logs out and then what do you want to log in and it's said no matter what I do I run up against an issue that that I'm that what I, that that login is not part of the business clients guest list or accepted list and it just dumps me out so that's yeah, it's, it's the, the browser cache. It, yeah it's, it's, it's the, it, the how that's like in fact it got brought up at MVP <laughs> yeah. again and this is a, like we've all been experiencing this is like I have my old Microsoft ID and then I have my company and I have my email that I've been using for the last, you know, three and a half years. Uh, and, uh, and they're, they're different. And uh, Microsoft, you know, needs to give people the ability to tie them together. We are one in the same. And so uh, I'll get invitations to participate in various uh, teams activities and other stuff and Microsoft official communications will send things because my Microsoft you know, MVP uh, award is tied to my Microsoft ID, which I don't use for anything except for those things that Microsoft sends me to. And so half the times and I'll click on a link and I'm guessing like, is it to me? Is it to my Microsoft ID? You know, and, and I'll, I'll have to log out or occasionally ask people, can you please resend that invite? So I can actually get in. It's my work email, not my Microsoft ID. Yeah. So there's just that that's that federation that they need to enable us to do. Yeah, yeah. I got an equally interesting thing. Uh, there's one Microsoft site I go into that will not take my ID because it's Hotmail.ca rather mm -hmm. than Hotmail.com. The .ca only existed for like three months before Microsoft scrapped it, and I've got one of them. But I there's certain US Microsoft sites, I can't get into with it. Ugh. Annoying. You can't yeah. even log into Hotmail. <laughs> yeah. I like, I kind of like Sean's, um, okay, no. Um, how about Zach? Does that show up facing the right way? Yes. Yep. Yeah, okay. it does. Even though it looks wrong when you're looking at it, Marcy, on your okay. own screen. I think I'm going to have to steal that idea because some of our social client conversations will be enhanced by that. They might get a chuckle out of it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. 
Well, anyway, before they run out of um, non-essential items on Amazon, this is this plus that backdrop is twelve ninety nine. Are those like the felt ones that you could have like a felt board behind no, you? No, it came with a stick. I'm supposed to put them on sticks. Oh yeah. And um, it just came in the mail, and it's it's sitting on my counter. Um, but I have all sorts of plans for all the black. I, I ordered a lot of backdrops. I I figured we'd be in quarantine for a while. Well, yeah. if, you're gonna be, if you have yeah. the time, what you need to do is on your desk, you need to have a, like a serious a series of buttons. And as you push the button, the oh no, you're not gonna go the do sign the Kramer thing in from the side. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I could actually rig something. I could totally rig something. Yeah. It has it has to come with like a sound effect. It has to like pop. Boom. <laughs> <Yeah>. Booyah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Marcus with Kramer guy that has all the buttons. He's always funny to watch. Yeah. So let's see if there's any any other questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so Richard, so back over on the community, the watch party, Richard asks, um, well, kind of follow up to the question of why we're using Zoom. Again, uh, yeah, we're, we're not doing this to mock Microsoft for, with Teams. I get most of the day I'm on teams doing everything, uh, you know, community related activities. Um, all of our user group sessions are within teams. Um, we're using both the live, live meeting. Uh, in my view, that's pointing to Sherman. This guy's nuts. Yeah. Um, but Aww. the, um, a lot of cat. yeah. Uh, but no, we're the, the reason why we're doing this on zoom is because we are doing the live stream. So we're just trying to reach that, that broader audience. And, and, and one of the reasons why there's a lot of requests for Microsoft to provide anonymous access and other capabilities to, to essentially make teams and enable it to be a, uh, is that, is that an actual cat there? Mercy? Is there a delay? Yeah. Uh, sorry. I, I, I'm not that big of a delay, Marcy. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, there is, but where is your camera? How? Where can you see? Well, it's because I was over. On, I'm, I'm over on the watch party. I'm what was looking. The delay the is between the ears. <laughs> yeah, it's an actual cat. Okay, all right, there we go. <laughs> yeah. nice. This is how he he just wants me to hold him. Like, so relaxed. Yeah, very nice. Don't feel too bad. My cat sleeps on my chest with her back paws around either side of my face. I wake up with a bad case of cat butt. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so so long story short, um, we're using um, so, so Microsoft is, is under has heard the requests about doing some of the more webinar type capability. It's it's not the 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 use cases that they built teams around, which is more for the enterprise. But recognizing this, like we were talking about, in fact, um, that you know Patrick joined us and was asking questions around saying, hey, there's still scenarios where people don't have uh, you know, full licenses or any license of this, but I need to involve them in these things. How do they're I- They're not even part of the organization. Right, so that, you know, whether they're in or out of the organization doesn't matter. I need to occasionally pull people in by email. I need it to have that, that you know, ease of use as you do using Zoom or GoToMeeting or any of these other you know, external tools or, or so yeah, don't anyway, hand so, me a Byzantine process. Right. So they, so they, they're, they're aware of those, uh, of those requirements, but I'm not aware of the request that Richard's other half of that question is, is live streaming on the team's roadmap. No, not that I'm aware of. Um, and so their, their recommendation, of course, they have their uh, streaming technology is theirs is mixer. I don't use it. So is that theirs mixer? Uh, it's more of a gaming Right, though, you know. but people have used Mixer or VMix or Twitch or other things right. where they're able to go and do things within Teams and invite people into Teams and then do the live streaming. Or uh, what's the restream is one, like Daryl Webster, part of uh, Regarding 365 team um, out of Auckland. So he's a big restream um, yeah, person. You're getting off into territory, I don't know. Yeah, so that you're actually able to to live stream, um, you know, synchronize live streams on multiple platforms, which here we're just doing out on Facebook. So, I you know, we might move to doing that so that we can do things within Teams for the people that are 
you know, participating like this panel. Um, and then just uh, let everybody else, uh, you know, consume that, uh, that, that stream via YouTube and Facebook or Twitter. All right. So we've got just a couple more minutes. Any other parting shots? Um, so Sean, you're, you were talking about your next, uh, gigs in Reno and you're appearing on stage in Reno and Vegas. Is that right? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. so. The post quarantine world is going to be so different because this is what we'll expect now. That's right. Well, you know, that's, that's a great point. Like it'll be interesting to see the effects of this period, however long it takes of right. whether more organizations, um, like I, I interviewed uh, with, with a comp with a couple of companies. Funny. I've been in collaboration tech since the late nineties. And yet most of the companies I worked for did not have work from home policies. They wouldn't allow it. Right. Uh, even the time I was with Microsoft, it was, like pulling teeth to be able to, to be able to work from home one or two days. This was a topic this morning too. Yeah. yeah I, we were talking about. Yeah. Go ahead, and managers Christian. want to be able to jerk that leash. Well, it'd just be interesting to see person. if companies that because they were forced into this scenario, whether they'll then, uh, because we know it won't just go snap back to normal, that it'll be this effect, this long-term effect on, Hey, we're going to have to reduce the number of, in-person activities around this and be more flexible for the roles that are able to uh, uh, work from home, if not full-time, at least part-time. And so I think it's going to be a, you know, a boon to uh, these areas that the, you know, Microsoft and, and the various competitors that are in this space. Yeah, well, before this happened, Ontario was having a big debate over having two distance education courses added to the curriculum. And I think that the base now been solved. Yeah. yeah. My wife's in education and uh, she's a college professor and she is now forced to hold office hours online. Uh, she's been meeting with students through Zoom, typically. Uh, she had a department meeting today where her uh, comrades got together with her and uh, they all discussed the situation. So I think we're gonna see a lot of changes stick yeah. As a result, Anyways, the biggest problem is you're now always on and always available. And she's yeah. actually started saying, you know, I am not available after 10 p.m. till 9 a.m. kind of thing. Well, that gets down to the uh, personal boundaries issue. And setting boundaries. Good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, setting boundaries. We talked about this mo this morning, too. Yeah, it is so critical to do that, too. Like we talked about uh, in our session this morning of uh, just, you know, like, uh, and I love how you've seen some people that have blogged about and tweeted about setting up the uh, smart lights. Like if it's red around the door on the outside of the office door, don't come in, I'm on your know, broadcast. You have oh, that. Clever. I like that. That'd be a good right? Yeah, a few people have done it. So Sean's got it as well. I, I am gonna set that up. That's, okay. this is actually, I know it, the, the color's off, but it's red right now. Yeah, so I've signal. got my little my little flick my smart button here, which I have set up. Um, it does two controls. So one uh, hooked up to my phone, it'll uh, you know cross the room. I can snap a picture. I never use it. And the other <laughs> uh, the other the other thing that it does, if you hold the button down, it makes fart noises, which is so useful in so many scenarios. I thought about I could always rewire the take a picture feature to turn the light red or green. I'm not giving up that other feature, though. Yeah, yeah. no, you that's, a keeper. that's, that's, that's a keeper. That's a keeper. Yeah. Did you did you already do it? What? Did you push that button? No. I'd like to hear it. What, what, are, you, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> what did you hear? Who told you? No. Uh, hey, we're out of time. We're just. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks and everybody we'll have to cut there. We should yeah. all look really offended after he does it. Yeah. Uh, that was a, somebody asked. He's so uh, viral. I say all the time. Like, he did the teams smell vision. <laughs> smell vision. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a lot of people angling for that feature. It's not in user voice. The smell they just don't realize they need it yet. Yeah. So don't want that blown at me. I think I'm people sorry. do realize that they don't need that. So, well, thanks everybody for participating. And uh, 
for those that uh, uh, you're wondering what we're doing on here again, well, this is uh, every Monday, so we'll be back at two times. So both from a Pacific time frame, it's uh, 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. And so we'll be back next Monday. So hopefully uh, if you've got, save up your questions, come and ask. And thanks for everybody for being on the panel. And please yeah. join us as well. Yeah. So brace and you'll impact. sign me out because they don't know how to sign out on this one. Yeah. I'll shut it all down. Shut it all Excellent. down. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Take care, everyone.